Are you nervous to stamp on your scrapbook pages? Do you keep buying stamps, but then you're worried about how they will look on your layouts? Hey crafty friends, it's Chelsea, and today I'm gonna show you three foolproof ways to use stamps on your scrapbook pages. You don't need a ton of skill or practice to use these techniques, and I want to help you create in a way that minimizes your chance that you will be unhappy with the finished product. I have been stamping for a long time, and besides doing lots of practice, the best thing I have found is to make a plan before I even get started. Usually this means a sketch, I just grab a piece of paper and a pencil and quickly jot down my ideas, and then I have a starting place and I kind of know where I want the stamping to go. Now, if you don't have a plan or you're not sure where to start, you can use sketches, you can use patterns, and you can use inspiration from Pinterest or Instagram like I did for my layout today. I'll make sure to link that down in the description box if you wanna go and see what inspired me. All right, we're gonna go and start creating. We are gonna start off today's layout with my all-time favorite base, White Daisy cardstock. It is cut smaller than 12 by 12 because I'm going to double mat it today. My photos here, the square one is four by four, and then I have some circular photos which were cut with these circles, thin cuts, and I'm gonna be using those thin cuts for my pattern paper today as well. This little circle that says, I was made for sunny days, was cut from the beach party uh, picture my life cards. We'll have all the supplies I'm using today linked down in the description box for you. And here is the star of the show. This is the July stamp of the month called Voice of the Seas. And I'm gonna be using this one a lot for today's techniques. So the first way that I like to use stamps on my layouts is on the base page before I have attached anything. That way, if I mess up, if I double stamp, if I drop something, I can either figure a way to fix it more easily because I haven't attached anything yet, or I can just grab a brand new piece of cardstock and start over. My goal with the tips that I'm giving you in this video are really to take the pressure off. You know, so you can just relax, have fun creating your layout, adding in your stamps onto your projects and not worrying so much about making sure everything is perfect. I chose toffee ink for this background stamping, one because I wanted it to match all the brown tones going on, but I also didn't want it to stand out too much. I want it to blend in with my background. No matter what kind of project you are stamping on, there's a few things that you can do to make sure you get a better impression. First off, using the right size block. If you have a tiny stamp on a big block, you're more likely to transfer ink onto your project from the block. Also, when you get new stamps out of the package, rub them on your skin and remove that kind of manufacturing residue on there. And also do a test stamp like you can see there. I used a piece of printer paper and tested my stamp before I go on to my project. Finally, putting some cushioning under where you're stamping, like the backside of the Versamat, gives it a little bit more cushion under there and usually gives you a better impression. Another thing that's important when you're stamping is to give good pressure onto the block. So you wanna press on the outsides, but you also wanna press on the center to make sure that the whole image transfers. And I find that when you're using a spongy surface underneath, like the back of the Versamat, that also helps, even if you don't get perfect pressure over the whole block. I'm adding a little bit of edge distressing to these craft photo mats. I thought it would fit the nice beachy theme of this layout. We were fortunate enough to go to Maui on the Close to My Heart incentive trip earlier this year. And this story is just about how much we enjoyed walking along the beach and also how hot that sand is. It felt like my feet were on fire. I couldn't believe it. I used those same circle dies to cut out my pattern paper, which is from the Four Seasons Summer Paper Pack, which launches August 1st in the new core catalog. And then I used Bluebird and Sundance cardstock. And those two smaller circles that have the kind of the rays on them, those were cut from the same Picture My Life card as the title. The second way that I like to use stamps on my pages is on layers. So as you can see here, I am stamping on my circles. I am using the coordinating ink, so Bluebird ink on Bluebird cardstock. It's very soft and tone on tone, but it wouldn't matter even if you wanted to use a darker, more bold or contrasting ink. 
The idea is just to stamp on the layers of your paper so that if your stamping doesn't work out like you want it to, you can find a way to either like rotate the layer and hide it. You could cut a new piece and start over very easily. Uh, or you can just flip it over and use the back side. Now remember, Close to My Heart cardstock is two-toned. So if you flip it over, you will be either using the lighter or the darker shade of that same color. I am basically using these small seashells and starfish to create my own pattern paper. I'm taking colors of cardstock that coordinated with my project and just creating custom pattern paper that match. Now you may have noticed I have stuck nothing down yet. I have committed to nothing. <laughs> so now I wanted something more of a base to kind of pull all these clusters together, all these clustered circles together. So I am using the Mermaid Lagoon Distress Oxide ink and I'm using the mini inking tool with the domed foam applicator on it. And I'm going to start in the middle where it's gonna be hidden by my circles and then blending outwards. So by the time I get to the edge, I want the color to be very soft and it basically just fades off to nothing. This inking is also helping to tie in that background stamping that I did and the blue over top is actually kind of pushing that stamping even more into the background. And I think it really adds to the whole beachy ocean feel on this page. Now off camera, I'm gonna finish doing this inking. I'm gonna make sure I have ink coming out from behind all three clusters. And then I'm gonna add more stamping. So I am using this brand new stamp set. It's called Background Elements and it launches in the new core catalog August 1st. And you can see here, I'm just cleaning up the block where I got some of that Mermaid Lagoon Oxide ink on it. And I'm gonna start adding it around the edges of my cluster because I just want it peeking out from behind. If you love the perfectly imperfect pattern set from this past year that a lot of us have used to death, <laughs> then you'll probably be as excited as I am for this new version. It gives us more ways that we can stamp on our backgrounds and add that nice little splatter and like paint swash look to our pages and projects. Uh, here, I love how this turned out. See how I keep stamping and stamping and stamping? Basically, I just let the little splatters fade off as I get to the edge of that inking. It gives this really cool water effect that basically feels like splashing water. I decided with this white background, I really wanted my circles to pop a little bit more, so I grabbed the toffee ink and I'm just going around inking the edges. I didn't go in super far, just kept it right on the edge and just adding a little bit more definition to those pieces of paper. Now for the third way that I like to use stamps on my projects and that is as an embellishment. So I am going to stamp a few images onto white cardstock with the intense black ink because I know that I wanna color them with my alcohol markers, the tri-blend markers. And this ink works with watercolor, with colored pencil, with alcohol markers. It's so flexible. Most of the time, anything that I know I want to color, I use this intense black ink for. Then I don't need to worry about what I use afterwards to do my coloring. But honestly, it's probably going to be the tri-blend markers because they're just so easy. And the reason I say they're so easy is because there's three shades in one marker. There's a dark, a medium, and a light, and they all blend together beautifully. So you don't need to worry about choosing colors and hoping they blend or anything like that. The work, that part of the work is already done for you. So you can see here, I used the dark first, blended over top of that with the medium, and then I'll blend over that with the light. The kind of head, chest part, I'm going to leave white, but I will be using a colorless blender to blend all the grays together and also just soften my edges where the gray meets the white. I'm just softening it. Here, that blender is wet, so it's gonna look really gray and muddy and not that great, but you'll see later on when it's dried that it looks really nice and white still in that area. For the beak and feet, I just used the gold yellow blend and I just used the lightest shade. I didn't bother blending because they're such tiny little areas. And then on these 
uh, posts that he is standing on top of, I use the red-brown blend. And I didn't do a whole bunch of blending. Basically, I took the darkest shade, drew in some of the lines on the wood, and then I'll do the same with the medium shade and then fill in the remainder with the light shade. When I'm coloring embellishments like this, I just want it to be fast. They are not the star of the show like they would be on a card. The photos are still the star on my layout, uh, but I want them to look nice. So I am going to finish coloring everything off screen and then I am going to go ahead and cut these all out. When I am hand cutting out anything, I don't have dies for it. I just like to leave a small white border around the outside, just the same way a die would. I've gone ahead and attached everything down to my page. The circle photos and the title are on there with foam dots. And then I'm also putting on my stamped embellishments with foam dots. So they add a little bit more dimension to the layout. You can see I've created three clusters on my page. So I'm following that triangle design. Uh, which just keeps your eye moving through the page and creates nice balance. Uh, to add some stamped images to that top cluster, I used the little starfish and seashells, which I also colored with my markers. And now I am using a pencil and tea ruler just to add some journaling lines so I can fill in the little story, talk about how hot the sand was. And here's my finished page. Off camera, I added those little teal dots. This is a new embellishment that is coming out in a ton of colors in the new core catalog. So I'm sure you'll be excited to see those. And these little flags here that say, remember this day were cut from another beach day picture my life card. Since I had those out, I thought I would add some more words to this page. I also added a double mat to my page with a bluebird cardstock and the wood grain paper that I used for the circles as well. If you guys want some more stamping inspiration, check out this layout on the screen where I added a ton of stamping to my page. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.